Attention musicians, I know if you're like me, being stuck in this quarantine, you've been sitting around playing every song you know. Are you looking to learn more songs? Well, I have the app for you. Whether you're a professional musician or a beginner, Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app for you. For just $2.99, you get the chords and tabs for over a million songs on guitar, bass, and ukulele. You also get a bunch of tools, man, amazing tools like a tuner, metronome, chord library, lessons, videos, and more. Go to ultimateguitar.com or download the app from your app store today. That's Ultimate Guitar. Let's get down. Attention Austin musicians and music industry professionals. Are you having a difficult time navigating these waters, especially after the coronavirus and all the clubs have been closed? You don't know what to do? Well, let me tell you about a great resource for you. That's the Austin Music Foundation. Austin Music Foundation provides ongoing artist development services through its educational panels, one-on-one consultations, and online resources. Now listen, gang, all of that stuff is available to you, the artist or music industry professional, for free. And since coronavirus hit back in March and everything is closed down, Austin Music Foundation had the forethought to move all of their programs online that's right you can watch panels online you can do your consultations online austin music foundation is there for you and it's all free to you the artist just go to austinmusicfoundation.org that's austinmusicfoundation.org get involved Did I get here? And now here is your host. I'm Bobby. Where we talk. All right. Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys all had a good week. Whatever it is you do during the week now under quarantine. It's getting crazy, man. We're moving in on a year. In a month, it'll be a year we've been in our houses. Most of us. You know, I know a lot of you guys guys still have to work, but a lot of a lot of us musicians locked in our houses, man, singing into our phones, <laughs> hopefully writing and recording new tunes and doing that kind of stuff. I have uh, I want to welcome any new listeners to the show today because the band that's on the show today is from Chattanooga, Tennessee. So uh, welcome to the show. My name's Johnny. I'm a musician from Austin, Texas. I've been doing this show since August of 2011. And uh, and I have over a thousand shows out, all these conversations with great artists. And today is no different. Uh, Rachel Garber, Rosalie Garber, and Amelia Jacobs, all sisters, have a band called Call Me Spinster. They're my guests on the show today. They're from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they just released their self-titled EP in December. And it is absolutely fantastic. This is their debut EP. It's also available on vinyl. It's on Strolling Bones Records. They, uh, they went to Athens, Georgia and, and started recording and then the quarantine happened and they had to finish it up doing the vocals and stuff at their house, but it was produced by Drew Vandenberg who worked with Ub Montreal. These guys are amazing. Uh, Amelia, Rachel, and Rosalie are all multi-instrumentalists. Uh, they have accordion, glockenspiel guitar, trash can percussion, mandolin, ukulele, banjo, bass, harmonica, all the things, and they sing beautifully together. Only, like the way that only only siblings can do. You know, you got those bands like the Bee Gees, you know, that have this certain harmony together. They sound a certain way because they're, they've are they been doing it the whole time. And they know each other inside and out. It's unbelievable, man. This this record's great. There's a great single called Here You Are. There's a video for it that's that's fantastic. You can watch it. I had a really great conversation with Rachel, Amelia, and Rosalie, but I do have to say that since it was done over Zoom, and they were all in one room, kind of talking into one computer, their room was a little echoey, the connection wasn't amazing. I mean, you get used to the sound. I think everyone's getting used to, like, funky sound, because it's, like, on the news, it's on the talk shows, uh, whatever this Zoom thing is. Anyway, there's a little bit of funky sound, but I really, we had a really great conversation. They're very, extremely entertaining very energetic and so cool. They're so talented, man. I can't believe this is their first record, but you should check it out. Call me Spencer's self-titled EP available now and go to spinsterband.com or wherever it is you stream and download your jams, but you can get their merch, find out what's going on with them, see videos, spinsterband.com. So please, without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with these three fabulously talented and lovely sisters, Amelia Jacobs, Rachel Garber, and Rosalie Garber better known as Call Me Spinster. 
Let's get down. sing harmonies do you sing all around one mic together we have um I'm trying to think if any on the ap were that we tried to it, it was tricky yeah, yeah to kind of get that right when we were we did a lot of the vocals um especially the backup vocals uh, at our house um because covid had already shut down sessions at that point so so did you start the album before covid yeah okay <laughs> And you yeah. needed to do the vocals, so you did them at home. How did that? How did that? Was that <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Learning. you got you got this great guy to record it, right? But then you had to record the vocals on your own, and that's kind of like the most pristine part of the thing. And you you definitely nailed it. Like oh, the singing is gorgeous, and the songs are the record's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, hey. man, you guys did a really great job. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So how was it having to switch gears and go on your own? Like, are you guys good? Uh, is there one of you that kind of takes the the helm of uh, of like vocal producer or are you all just in the zone? <laughs> I have a million nerded out about it a lot, but um, we all kind of took turns. And, yeah. yeah. It's, it was in our, um, I live upstairs in the house and Rosie lives downstairs in the house. And so we got to do a lot of, the uh, recording sort of by default, but Amelia was over pretty much every day, um, just fiddling away as a, a long, slow YouTube university process. <laughs> yeah. And Tom drew like every every day. And he was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> we record lots of sounds that should be there. <laughs> and we so did, did. did he end up mixing it? Yeah. Okay. But that was remote too. So that was also kind of a challenging process because it was our really our first mixing experience and um you know not sure how sort of my hyper micro you know uh detailed we, we was sort of typical you know but any adjustments we made he would have to try out bounce out send over all three of us had to you know get right, together. right 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 so long and um, I'm sure very painful for <laughs> but we learn that way, you know, and really like sit with stuff and, um, and and go through the process of tweaking stuff and then going back to the original and that sort of thing. So we learned a lot through, through the whole process. I mean, I think that was the silver lining of it. We were really disappointed at first. Um, we were just so close and it was really pretty early COVID. And so we were trying to see if we could just kind of sneak in before it really kind of hit our, both of our areas. And, you know, Athens was kind of crazy. Was was with the university yeah. there. Oh, right, I guess. Yeah. I love Athens. It's, it's, a, it's a great movie too. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys cut the music like in a week there, right? Yeah. Well, and, and some of the vocals too. So we really, we really just had overdubs and backup vocals for, for four of the songs left to do. And then um, one song, the middle track, Long Hard Day, we kind of built, um, we still had to kind of build. We, we recorded a bunch of really um, kind of wacky steel tracks. In who, who did that? Because that, that stuff is just dreamy, yeah. man. But he, I mean, he's you know, very prolific. He plays with um, Kay Webster, I think most recently is who he's touring with, but, um, but several bands and, but so he did all of the guitars on the, on the record. So a lot of our really late nights were spent, um, with those studio guys um, just kind of jamming on stuff and fleshing things out. Because um, 
you know, the songs, the songs and structure were, you know, were pretty um, materialized going into studio, but, um, you know, for, for some of the tracks, we hadn't really tried them yet with like a full drum kit or, um, you know, we were, we were really kind of hashing things out in studio. So it took a while and, um, yeah, meeting Pistol, we were like, we, I think he was going to play on one song, and then we were like, we got it. Can you come back in tomorrow? <laughs> we, Let's stay we still. Yeah, yeah we, we put pedal steel in, in nearly every song after hearing Long Hard Day, some of the stuff he was doing. But, um, all that to say, like, we had all of these, these tracks that he had recorded with different kinds of distortion, and then um, brought it back home to, and then spent a couple of weeks just kind of layering and chopping it up and kind right. of making a, a skeleton for that song. And then we recorded all of it here. So that was the, the one track, track that I think we, we did most of, pretty much everything here. here. But a lot of the others um, were like probably 70% how do you how do you guys write usually um one at a time one of us brings sort of an idea and then the other two totally rip it apart and turn it into <laughs> another monster so it's really it feels very much collaborative in general whoever singing lead probably brought that original seed okay um and then uh but but yeah we, we we all take a stab at writing each other's parts and um often more often than not the parts are written by another member because they're hearing it okay there's not like some that's a lot of my bass lines actually yeah oh, really? i have a lot of opinions percussion. about percussion yeah. yeah um that sort of thing but the um yeah, usually it's like, you know, a, a verse and a chorus that someone will bring and then, you know, we'll sort of flesh it out from there. And a couple of songs, just just one on this EP and then I think probably a few on the, the full length that we're fixing to record here soon um, are were ideas from my husband who has been writing songs since he was a kid, but just like sings them in the, the car to keep himself awake. Like that isn't a musician, isn't a performer, but he loves music and writing songs. And so we, we've kind of jacked a few of his ideas and <laughs> mess around with them. So he, he keeps another band, silent band member. He keeps um, his voice memos and then just sends them to us. And they're <laughs> some they sometimes are in tune and sometimes not so much. But there's always a nugget that's like, oh, that's a hook, or oh, that's that's a lyric, and then it just turns into. And sometimes he's it's a little bit upset by our versions of the songs. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, but it's it also that he's just yeah. Um, did you guys see this documentary about the Bee Gees? <gasps> no, I just I heard an started. interview. Oh. Um, uh, the brother that's Barry? still alive. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah we got to have a movie night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they they were were a movie. That, there's a thing that, that uh, like, in there, there's a lot of, like, uh, brother shit that goes on throughout their relationship, throughout their entire careers, and through the, the lives of the guys that passed away. But one of the things that, that, that as a songwriter myself drove me fucking nuts was that these dudes had three guys always. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so you could, yeah, sure. You can sit down and write a song like how deep is your love? Because you got two other people that are awesome. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And who will tell you straight up if it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. There's no politeness. They'll just, uh, I'm pretty local person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a career. Holy shit. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so, 
I come, uh, my mom is one of, or was one of four sisters. And granted, uh, I am, I'm Cuban. They were born in Cuba, these sisters. So there's like a little fiery action going on. Um, how does, <laughs> what goes on with you guys? Like the, do, do people, like does someone like Drew, if he's in the room working with you guys and some shit starts going off, do you guys, do you guys have the kind of intensity that somebody will leave the room? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no like a person a person not involved will be like, there's nothing I can do about this. I'm just gonna go. Yeah. That's funny. I think we've surrounded ourselves as really patient people and <laughs> Yeah. But there's but, definitely some hiding that happens. Like we um our our practice space is also my home, which I share with my boyfriend, and there are many times when he's like I had to pee so bad, but I didn't because I didn't want to come out of the room. <laughs> but in general, I would say we um, we have, especially working with Drew. I would say, if anything, it was like we we were able to kind of come together with a common enemy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Drew, Drew became like a, a four sister. Meeting a four sister. <laughs> yeah, he would just like jump right into the frame. Right. He's also good at kind of, I think he sort of picked up on a lot of our dynamics right away, you know? And like one thing I noticed, um, like Rosie's the baby, and um, I think you know, through our whole lives often has, been talked over and you know uh, it has to kind of like <laughs> and I think you sort of yeah. picked up on that right away and would you know turn and say Rosie do you, what do you think about that? I think it was more like please have a different opinion <laughs> so we can team up but <laughs> yeah but that, was, that was great that was really, it was really sweet he's he's been awesome to work with and for you know First, we, you know, we were really, well, two out of three of us were complete first-time recorders. Um, first time in the studio. Yeah, first time in the studio, period. So it was such a huge learning curve. And, you know, we were um, thrown into this fray. I, I mean, we showed up the first day, my first day of recording ever, and, you know, are meeting these studio musicians who, like, play in bands that, Worship, <laughs> like they they right, keep right. in Montreal, you know, and and we're like teaching them our songs, like trying, you know, it's so it was so surreal and just felt like, you know, we don't. Uh, I we're not worried. Worried. <laughs> it was just very 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 humbling, and we did such a great job of um, like taking the reins on, you know, sort of directing the show, but like really making sure that we felt empowered and, you know, he was responding to a lot of our, you know, sometimes kind of um, airbrained ideas throughout the whole, the whole process. So we felt like sort of co-producers and in the studio. And then obviously we had a lot more leeway once we um, were DIYing it ourselves, but it was a great you're Rachel, right? I'm Amelia. Okay. Wait. Rachel. Okay, sorry. Amelia, you're the you have a child? Yes. Yeah. I do. Seems yeah. like uh it seems like like uh is he he's a boy? Yep. Okay. Three. Uh, what's that? Three. He's three. He seems like he kind of came up. I was going through your Instagram. Uh, <laughs> and it looks like he's just kind of come up in the thing. <laughs> Yeah. With you guys. Well, the yeah, band just... started when he popped out. When he... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Family enticed us over. Mm-hmm. Like, um, these guys are living. <laughs> Rachel was in Costa Rica, and Rosie was in Portland, Oregon. And um, we were just kind of like, you know, messing around with, with the idea of playing music together, but really hadn't done it in earnest. We, like, played some family weddings, like learned a song or two and did a little road trip one summer where we were learning songs, um, but really enjoyed it a lot more than we expected, I think. And um, 
wanted to give it a shot at some point, but that just seemed, I, I was, we're, we're all teachers. And so I was going to take a maternity leave for a year. And so the girls were like, we'll do that too. We'll just come move to Chattanooga and, um, you know, try to find some part-time work. I guess you year old. Um, Anyway, but not being teachers, which not being for, teachers. for well, me was yeah, you were as part yeah, time. You were part time. Um, for me, is was a big shift, especially for music, because I was teaching music full time and just feeling like I didn't have the emotional or creative bandwidth to be arranging songs for right for kids and then also songs for our own things. So that was a big shift. I think moving here was. Um, we all kind of put that life on hold and jumped into this new identity. How are you feeling about it now? <laughs> I pray <laughs> so much uh, <laughs> compassion and patience for all of those incredible humans out there still doing it. Oh, and I am so grateful I'm not one of them. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Hard. Our mom oh, is still yeah. a choir director. He's doing virtual choir at a, huge at a massive school. high school in St. Paul, Minnesota, and it's and just banging her head against the wall. How is she able to go up? You're supposed to be singing this note, but you are singing this one. <laughs> but it's delayed, like should we sing? They do a lot of theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're very good at reading. <laughs> So you're all multi instrumentalists. So, so your would your dad play? I, do, I saw a picture of a of a man that looked like a dad figure <laughs> in one of the photos. Probably our dad. Yeah, he's a guitarist and no, he's, writer. he's learning some piano. He just retired last year. And he... what did he do? Is he a teacher as well? Well, originally, yeah. He really, was, our parents yeah. met at. Um, at music school ed. for music education, but he uh, he fell back on his sort of construction roots and um, throughout our childhood was uh, working as a manager of a sewer cleaning manufacturing company. Wow. So we're here for 30 plus years and, um, and then came home every night and played guitar. Usually was watching some sports game with the, the sound off and Rocking out on guitar. What so, kind of what kind of stuff was he playing? What a dad rock. Folk rock, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like dad rock, like what? Like like rock. I would say more he like he loved like the Guess Who and oh, over. Right. Well, yeah. More like yeah, kind of soft, like uh, a lot of Paul Simon. And, um, oh yeah, dad stuff. Dad stuff. And, 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 wrote, wrote a lot of yeah, he has a ton too. of his own repertoire that. The, Still, I think in our adult life, we'll be like, oh, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely. We worked up one on one. I mean, we that song. Yeah, now, that's but, what I was going to ask. Like, do you ever pay tribute to the old man by jamming one of his dad rock folk rock tunes? <laughs> <laughs> it's just better if he does it. But. <laughs> we, we, so we learned one that's kind of about. Um, yeah, it's like sort of a cautionary tale about of luck, you know, deciding about hazards of the road. You know, most love doesn't work out. How are we gonna be different? How are we gonna be different? So we thought that was pretty. pretty to yeah. Just his progeny. Um, so did he go on the road? Like, did he travel? Did he travel, or he just kept his job and played at home and kept it to himself? <laughs> In Texas, actually. He what? He spent one year in, in Houston, in Dallas. In Dallas, Dallas. Dallas. That's what it was. Yeah, um, playing at a bar. Playing at a bar. Yeah. Like Body. playing at a bar every night for a year. Something, Something like, like that. Yeah, he I don't was, really know how he survived. He worked, in the, <laughs> he worked for the park, the city parks during the day, and then played out at night. A lot of solo stuff, and I think from how he tells the tale, I think he realized it was sort of. A covers world, and I think he really wanted to play his own play, stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know, and and then he and mom decided to get married soon after, and they 
then went back to teaching. Um, something stable. I don't know. He he's a, he's from an Amish Mennonite background. Wow. So he was really going out, out on a limb. It was like in a lot story. of ways. Yeah, it was like his real naughty. I mean, already playing music um, in in the Amish culture, anyway, is is very taboo. I mean, even are you, have you ever heard Amish singing before? No. It's kind of shape note esque almost, but um, the whole idea is that no one is supposed to really stick out, and you're not supposed to make your voice sound pretty. And so it's this kind of droney. It's um, like an accordion, but like, <laughs> you know, uh, 30 people. <laughs> it does end up being beautiful, though. It's yeah, so well, and yeah, of course, it's there's like good strong. Amish singer, good Amish callers, and, good, and not good Amish callers. But they, um, so his dad kind of started the legacy of breaking um, the musical yeah. rules and that, and got an accordion and the guitar when he was still Amish, and then they left the Amish soon after. And he became a, Men a Mennonite minister. So the, in the Mennonite tradition, there's there's more singing, tr traditionally no instruments, though, um, in services and stuff. So um, at least in there, they're like a pretty old school Mennonite head covering the, you know, men and women on opposite sides. Opposite of the sides, yeah. Um, that sort of thing. So how did you guys, did you guys grow up with some kind of like religion in the home? Our parents had already kind of bounced the other direction, but my, our mom was um, choir, the choir director at a, at a very liberal um, college university church. Yeah. So we, we grew up in that community and sang in church choir and took voice lessons from the, the, the youth choir director and um, did the did all the pageants and all the <laughs> um, the church theater stuff. So we grew up we were in like that world, musically but... involved in a church yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a while. And, but it, oh, was I was going through confirmation. Mom like kind of made a exit. Like, this is one of them. Where where are your parents? They're in Chattanooga. No. We're in Minnesota. In Minnesota. We grew yeah. up in, in St. Paul. So we, we, I would have been in Chattanooga probably nine years or so. Um, and um, then the girls for like, what, as long as they need. Um, so we're pretty new to, new to town in the south. Okay. Um, <laughs> let so growing up in Minnesota, like, how did you guys start picking up? Is that when did you learn instruments? Like, when did you start playing stuff? Not in Minnesota, really. We, the, we're very new to, to most instruments. Really? Yeah. Sort of. Oh yeah, like sort of obligatory piano lessons for. And we sang, you know. But, but um, did you ever notice that there was some kind of uh, like cohesive sound like? that there was some kind of like, cause there is some kind of like unique magic that happens when you sing together, which I think happens with people whose voices blend like that. I think we, we learned to appreciate it in like the summers when we would hang out and like we, we started working up songs for, you know, cousins weddings and stuff. And, um, and then it, we had to, we had to leave it, leave home. I'll do our own thing and, you know, come back to each other and, and realize how fun it was and how like good of a way to hang out and keep hanging out. It was. <laughs> I think our parents would have loved for us to be a family band. And there was some attempt. I remember one time performing at the public library, which is like half a block from our house. And oh, yeah. uh, for some event, and I, it was mortifying. <laughs> I was in fifth or sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> my my small foot down, and um, yeah. so I, we, I, and especially me, I've really fought uh, sort of musical participation for a long time, and I think a lot of it was because I just had a lot of anxiety. And, but um, so we didn't really learn. The, really, the accordion was sort of the, the gateway 
Well, no, I suppose you. Rachel's a Rachel's Rachel been, always been a performer, I think. <laughs> yeah, she performed in throughout college and has a college band that she still gigs with. Occasionally, there's more of a project based band now. But um, and then Rosie Helen, we were playing bass. And so after college, Rachel got me the rent to own. Um, what was that like 2014? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And that's when you took your first YouTube tutorial. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I always wanted to play, but it was awesome. So I I uh, started playing uh, more, like I mean, really playing. Not until we I moved here, though. The girls so were, had a little band in college called the Pheromones, and it was like an 80s, 90s cover band. You guys had a couple gigs, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Two. One, <laughs> one at the university bar and one at the bar down the street. And they wouldn't pay us, but <laughs> they let us play. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was teaching middle school choir at the time, and so we got to use the choir room as our practice space and use the drum set for the middle school jazz band that wasn't happening. So we had access to some space and instruments. Got all of our Spice Girls out, out of our system. Nice. A lot of the we first started playing were um, repertoire from we're what? We're repertoire from that that little cover band that they started. So, so would you play like Never Gonna Get It? No, I, 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 I should. We haven't oh, done man. that one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. We did Obvious Choice. No uh, Doubt. Oh, yeah. You and me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Robin. And uh, Walk Like Europe. an Egyptian. Walk, um, we did... Um, Oh, I, I saw the sun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that Ace of Base? Yeah. 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 All, all the goodies. There is a, there's a song of yours on the record called Stop, Wait. And I wrote, uh, the backing vocals are like En Vogue or something. Hey. Yes. <laughs> you know, like that never going to get it, like the way the notes rise, you know? Yeah, that we, definitely listened to it. <laughs> that, that was one that really kind of evolved in studio. We've been messing around with a lot of different kind of approaches to it, and we've been performing it out for a little while in a little bit more like rocky, almost more like we were, I was vibe. going for like the band kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah. yeah, more like sing to me my words, <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Drew was like, no, 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 this is, <laughs> this is R&B. Yeah. <laughs> what? And we, you know, grew up listening to Mucho, uh, Eric Abadu, and Bill Scott. We were sort of coming up at the peak of Neo Soul, and that was, um, so we were like, oh, wow, we could, like, get there maybe? I don't know. So we, we, we wrote... We rewrote the bass line in studio. We, you know, we're sort of revamping as we went, messing around with a lot of different keys ideas, both leading up to um, recording and then actually in the studio. So that one was was probably the track that evolved the most from our original conception. I love that uh, the rhythm guitar on there is is that direct, like no amp kind of Ooh, thing. Question. It was direct. Yeah. It was that was also pistol, pistol Matt pistol Stessel. Yes. Oh, there you go. Someone looked it up, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> that is the nice thing about being free. <laughs> three of us. One can look up. Yeah, that song's really your your stuff is very. It's interesting because as as you're telling me sort of the timeline of you learning music, it makes a lot of sense of just kind of like your. Uh, uh, uh it's, like it's it's a it's not a traditional approach to playing in a band like i've never seen someone use like a dish cleaning brush on a on a uh on a uh what are those things called washboard, washboard. what is wrong with me i can't think of words um <laughs> quarantine brain we're all in it i hate it 
<laughs> I do. Um, all right. So it, uh, what I'm saying is that the time that timeline makes sense that your approach would be sort of almost there's like almost this childlike innocence to your instrumental choices as opposed to like an electric guitar and a bass and an electric bass and drums. You know what I mean? That's fun. I, it's, it's something actually our, our parents were here for the holidays and um, that was something they kind of <laughs> were putting in the, the, they're always very worried to, to have too much of an opinion in, or that, or we'll like freak out and give it all up. So they they'll throw in like little tidbits here and there of like, well, what? Why banjo? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, a lot of the songs we're working on now um, are a little bit more more traditional in some sense. Like we're, we incorporated a lot of um, electric, guitar. electric guitar and synthesizer. Now we just got some. Boys. And I'm not playing much washboard because every show we played that was with a sound person that actually <laughs> wanted us to sound good, they would be like, why? Right, right, right. yeah. This is impossible. Like, do you want people to hear you? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the stupidest thing ever. Part of it was that we started out busking on like the bridge in Chattanooga a lot. And so we were, we were just taking all of Rachel's like, Best uh, kids' instruments and this trash that we're, we're loudest. Range. You know, I mean, I think we're, we're we're kind of finding that like we were sort of nostalgic for that sound. We prefer the sort of washboard hi hat sound to a, a hi hat or like rim, the sort of woody rim shot kind of sound. And so that's so, been fun. So does this mean you're going to start playing drums, Rachel? I I do have somewhat of a drum setup right now. It's, I'm it's a Big identity crisis. Yeah, you look kind of ashamed when you're saying that. There's like a sad look on your face. Um, no, it's it, it's good. To, we're just straddling this world, I think, of being born out of a desire to sound good in the room that we are in without being plugged in. And that comes from busking and it comes from sure. you know, sitting around a campfire and, and, how, and porches and, you know, that sound. But then also wanting to really explore the edges of pop music and electron more electronic sounds and and be able to play to bigger groups of people someday one day <laughs> um so that's kind of where we're we're at where it's like we still want to be like we want percussion that sounds good with voices and makes voices still be the front and center um but also make noise yeah that was one thing we realized, I think, through the recording process that Drew was sort of emphasize, continually emphasizing. We were scared of, of, you know, we recorded drum, drum and bass first, and um, the drum kit sounded so weird on a lot of the songs that we had loud. done. And we right, right, like, right. Mm, what is this? And um, and his point was that you know, if if these songs are getting a lot bigger, you need us sort of broader base to hang stuff on, you know, to build from. And I think we trust, we learned to trust that a little bit, or at least you sort of saw the value of it through the process as the songs were built. And, um, Still some... not a big fan of symbols, though. I think it's because our voices are so high. Uh, you know, just by being female and um, and not smokers, <laughs> that we're just not we're not taking up enough lower space, so that the mm -hmm. symbols then just feel like more right, more. right. Um, so yeah, I'm just more attracted to percussion sounds that have more mids and lows and stay in that world. I think. Right. I love that, Tom. Yeah, we <laughs> Tom all day. Tom and Tom and it hard right now. Um, when you guys started to make this album, it was before the pandemic had happened and you had obviously committed to doing this thing. Were you guys planning on going on tour? That was the hope. Yeah. Yeah. And so the reason we decided to do an EP was to just get something out there as quickly as we could to then tour 
who yeah. are on. Right, right. Because we're just so we're so brand new, and we had a lot of songs. We had you know well over a, a full length records worth of songs to record, but just figured this. Um, it might be the the most strategic thing to just do more of a sort of sampler of different kind of styles of writing that we've been experimenting with. And, um, and so, yeah, it's been it, in, that was disappointing on one hand, but also, you know, gave us all this time to incubate in a way that we wouldn't probably have taken otherwise. So both the sort of DIY engineering learning that happened but also making some making our own videos and um you know spending a lot of time so you made, you made the video for here you are we what? worked with a friend um yeah several yeah. friends of ours um to do that yeah i we i forget the song that um it's where but we just i watched a video of yours that sort of was a similar concept oh right it. with all the people in the thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Really great, um, <laughs> but yeah, our original thought for that video is we wanted it all to be um, folks in like elder care facilities or like you know um, older people, and so we. But that became less and less. It became possible. difficult, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, the but, older couple you have in there is really cute. Oh, they're so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's found people that we loved that. Are also interestingly beautiful and <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that one and then Two Hearts video was sort of stretched out over a really long time of early quarantine. Just um, uh, both Rosie and my husband were were working at the time at this um, local production company that does you know commercials and video content. So they had shut down production and um, we would just grab the camera and um, use the studio wall <laughs> at that time. So that was a huge asset. Um, but yeah, that and then just writing a bunch of new songs and um, kind of practicing in a way that we hadn't been doing it. Tell me. What what is practicing like you haven't been doing it? What's that like? I should show you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right there. <laughs> uh, just well, new instruments. I think is one. Rosie's been playing a lot more electric bass. Mm -hmm. and not working full time as you have in the last couple of years. Um, and then getting Rachel set up with uh, with her drum Sammy. kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, then, you think you're going to start twirling sometime soon, like twirling your sticks? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's that's a goal. These guys Irish dance, so I'm waiting for like some tap action to happen mm -hmm. as well. Well, percussive beatsies. Yeah, but the goal at some point, I want to start working on a, a stomp bass drum instead of a bass drum so that, yeah, I have the option of uh making making lots of noise yeah but it just i already feels so good to be able to be upright instead of i was my setup was on a cajon i was oh yeah it just, I, it just dude their, oh. you see people play cajon and in that that sort of like crouch position it just seems yeah. like eventually you would you would have a really hard time standing up straight again yeah, <laughs> and then trying to sing, you know, like get the microphone. Right, 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 right. The crouch is, yeah, it's not ideal. So it feels good to be up, even though I do miss, it's, it's such a beautiful, tone is a great, great, yeah, rhythm leader, but it, thanks. There was, this, <laughs> there was this band called Jellyfish, like in the early 90s, um, that was like a, a retro band even for then like they sound like they were from the 70s but their drummer was their lead singer and he played standing up which is real interesting to watch yeah down. jellyfish cool. jellyfish yeah you guys might like them great songs great harmonies standing up drummer like a little cocktail <laughs> set or was it like no a... no no it's like a full-on like drum set like if you look up live stuff of them it's it's pretty unbelievable cool. yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> it's also, it seems like that would cramp like your your shin. Then it seemed like your shin would cramp with the kick drum. She is getting really big, yeah. I think, from standing. <laughs> yeah. She's a yoga teacher, so she's fine, but I have to do one sided squats. <laughs> Wait, you're a yoga teacher as well, Rachel? I am, yep. Wow. My bread and butter during COVID. What kind of uh, yoga do you do? I started out in power yoga and my practice has really slowed down a lot and I, I love teaching restorative, um, but I teach in a lot of different studios in town. Um, and there's, a, at least in Chattanooga, it seems like there's a lot more older people that are going to yoga um, even through the pandemic. And so I've been teaching a lot more slower, restorative yin style classes. And then I also teach at a climbing gym, which I would have thought would have been really like <clears throat> power yeah, yoga. Yeah, yeah, With all of the adrenaline, the climbers always come in like, can we just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chill. let's do it. Let's chill. So it's, it's, um, it's changed a lot over the course of, I think. But she's awesome. She's my favorite yoga teacher. She's it's not just because she's my sister's. Gross. And I hate exercise. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you another question about touring, because I know it's hard to do, and you have a child, and you guys obviously have lives. Like, Rose, Rosie, do you have a boyfriend as well? I just got married. You just got married? Congratulations, <laughs> Mrs. Rosie. <laughs> yes. yeah. Your husband uh, took our last name. Really? Three G's. Isn't that awesome? Because his name is George Given, so he's George Given Graber now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Did a little backyard, backyard wedding. Family, family ceremony. Really Both cute. of our parents were down for um, holidays uh, since all their kids mostly are here. So we uh, just do a little shindig in the backyard. And that's really yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, so with all of that going on, and it's uh, – I would say this to people of any sex because it's expensive to tour and it's not like you come home with like an ass load of money, but you guys can keep your, your thing down by having just the three of you guys perform live. Right. Well, so yeah. adding a boyfriend um, here and there too, as a fourth, but yeah, we'll see if three. Yeah. What happens to him? Does he get in on the fights now that he's in the boyfriend zone, or does he does he also leave the room when the heat gets on? He leaves. He's the first out. Yeah, he's the first to get the hell out of there for sure. Smells like coming. Smart. My grandpa used to grab me, like when I was a kid, and my mom and her sisters would say the thing would start erupting. You could hear it like in the kitchen. He would come and grab me, and we'd go outside and go for a walk. <laughs> Come back and everyone would be crying and hugging each other. It was beautiful. <laughs> so how were you going to do this touring? Were you going to do like a few days out here, a few days out there, like kind of the modern way that people tour or, or play out like, you know, Wednesday to, you know, Sunday or something, or were you going to head out and just go to America in a van? <laughs> we were going to, we were going to try to do sort of a regional meal sort of situation. Sure. First, and we're so, Chattanooga is so centrally located. We're two hours from Atlanta, Nashville, Knoxville, close to Knoxville, Knoxville, Birmingham, Hunts. Yeah, so we're it's not far from Asheville. Um, the drive to New Orleans is pretty easy. Um, so that but that was sort of our original plan. But I, you know, our our long term vision, or at least mine is, is to buy a, an old bus and um, just we were looking pre throw the family yeah. in and <laughs> away we go. I mean, um, our parent and our, our parents are both um, on the verge of, of kind of fully retiring and would love to be road nannies and, um, you know, we'd work it out. I think we're, we're excited about the possibility of, and we all have partners that are pretty um, relatively flexible, um, or at least are interested in, um, you know, sort of being a part of it for sections and, you know, holding the fort for others. And so, I don't know, we'll cross that bridge, but I think we want to, we want to go for it at some point. And, um, 
Your parents, are they are they like, because they obviously had some kind of dreams of being musicians at some point. You don't, I don't think you dream of being a music teacher. I think that's something you end up, not that that's bad, but it seems like when you're younger, it's a little loftier. You know what I mean? Um, are they are they just like super proud of you guys or? I mean, oh, obviously yeah. they'll travel and be road nannies and shit. <laughs> they are. Our, our mom is from much more the classical world, um, and we grew up. She was still competing while, through our childhood, so I remember growing up going to her, you know, in her big fluffy dresses and being for this you know, very serious looking people, and um, so that that sense of like the grind, right was was present i think in a way we may or may not have been aware of and that that sense of like oh, i i do this because i love it um but it's still work you know that mm -hmm. that was very present throughout our childhood and and so yeah i think they're totally stoked to see this be something that they can support you know with their whole hearts for all, all, all three of us and um, I mean, they, they've been stoking this fire when we were kids without us knowing. So <laughs> we, we, owe, we owe them. <laughs> to our tw late 20s yeah. and early 30s to come around to their vision. Um, I didn't really get to talk about that song, Here You Are. It's such a great song. It's uh, like in a songwriting sense, like in the craft of the song. You know, like all the things are there in that song. Um, kind of like when you first heard uh, all about that bass kind of way. It's almost like a song that is so classic in one way. It's almost like you might have heard it before. So it has this immediate familiarity and mm -hmm. you connect with it. It's a really great song. It's the first Thank song you. I really wrote. I think, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's really our first, yeah, song, first song. original to us. But that's awesome to hear. Yeah, I mean, did you... About, baby, about having a baby. It is? Yeah. So you just wrote that song like three years ago or, or mm -hmm. a little bit before? Yep. I can't believe you guys are so new. But you're kind of not new. It's almost like it's been stewing inside of you your whole <laughs> lives. Yeah, that's what it feels so. like. Yeah, but it, now it just feels like, yeah, we just have... Um, not enough time to get it all out there. No, no, no. I think we're just so excited about writing. Um, do you do live streams? We just figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> we just did our first <laughs> <episode. laughs> for uh, the Mercy Creek, the village at Mercy Creek assisted living facility where our grandma lives. <laughs> we yes, two days ago we just did our first performance for them. Um, without any assistance, <laughs> yeah, with all by ourselves. We've live streamed from a few venues, um, just regionally, but in the last couple of months. But we had we hadn't really figured out a good setup for ourselves, so we bought a new board that um, has a lot more inputs and gives us a little bit more capability and figured out the software and stuff. So we'll be we're taking a little bit of a hiatus for an, about a month, and then. Um, and then we're going to start doing probably a weekly, just a couple songs at a time to sort of get get geared up to record our next project. Hopefully that's the plan. Are you um, going to do it again with Drew or what? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. If you have us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, is there anything I'm missing? You guys are fantastic. And you all have just the most beautiful eyes. Like what is going on? <laughs> your parents, your parents, do they have blue eyes as well? Yeah, but yeah. that that's our mom's trick to controlling a choir of 150 <laughs> people is these like scary blue eyes that go yeah. bloodshot. <laughs> um, we uh, so we so enjoyed checking out the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, it's so fun. And yeah, thanks for listening to my music. It's always. Yeah. You keep making it. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm actually after this I'm going to go uh write and uh start recording a song with a friend of mine. I've got, actually got a bunch of songs that I've done throughout the pandemic that I just don't know what to do. 
I'm such a creature of like playing gigs and like going to a place and and doing the thing that you do that like now like it feels weird releasing it and then singing here in my studio. You know, I highly recommend playing live stream for Sits of Living facilities because they're very <laughs> honest with their yeah, feedback. <laughs> I, I would, but I always feel like my music is so offensive to like children and elderly. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, that is, have you done much busking? <laughs> what's the, what's the scene like, like on the streets of Boston right now? People out and playing. We have a crazy homeless problem right now. Well, I'd be course. competing with like window washing guys and stuff like that. It'd be like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. I, I, I did, I, I have busked in like uh the 90s with a band but we did it to promote our shows yeah yeah, yeah. our regular shows <laughs> i feel hard. you know there's some people that can do that sort of thing and i have such an odd hey you know what I, like when you're trying to do that in a yeah yeah, yeah. someone's just walking like hey man i'm just walking down the street like <laughs> i don't want to deal with your business right now that's what i feel like i'm in, i'm invading people's mm -hmm. space yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like even shameless. making too much eye contact with when people stop to listen, they're <laughs> like this. They're trying to listen but not look at you, and like. <laughs> well, and it's also different. Like you guys have each other. You're a little, you know. There's, it'd be a lot different if it was just one of you guys out there. That would feel yes. alone would and odd. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when I did it, I did it with my whole band. Like you know, so it seemed I had a. At least I had some guys that could back me up if someone was going to kick my ass or something. Uh, well, seriously, it's been really great talking to you guys. And this record is gorgeous. Self-titled Call Me Spinster, which, by the way, there was a point this morning when I was cleaning up my kitchen and I was singing uh, Call Me Spinster to the tune of Call Me Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where it, that's where it was born, actually. We What? We our first, um, our first sort <laughs> of mash cover mashup that we filmed was a mashup of songs about Call Me. So it was Call Me Maybe with Call Me by Blondie and Call Me on My Cell Phone with Hotline Bling, Hotline Bling, Bling. Drake. And you should check it out. It's on YouTube. Um, <laughs> our so finest work to date. I'm pretty probably sure. true. So that became sort of our tagline. And then when we realized that we couldn't be called Spinster because there's already like five bands called Spinster, we just kept the call me part. Can I tell you, Spinster Stone is like, a, like an 80s hair band to me. Great. That was not a good <laughs> idea. We're like, we'll get, we're kind of folky right now, but we'll get there. Yeah. Cool. Once again, with the stick twirling. He's right. Stick twirling, <laughs> some perms, we'll be there. The universal, this is the universal hand gesture for stick twirling. <laughs> um, well, guys, it's been really great talking to you. Uh, this will air in a couple weeks, but um, it was it was really great meeting you. And if I mean, stay in touch. I I love your music. I want to hear whatever else you do. And next time you you have more music coming out, let me know. And if you ever come to Austin, I'll definitely come out and see you and bring people. Awesome. Yeah. I need to come to Chattanooga. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever been there. Um, Super cute. It's really a, there's good stuff to do. Place. You can yeah. go paddle boarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. right downtown. Have some good drinks and food. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Well, stay safe. It was really nice meeting you guys. Take care. Take care. Rachel Garber, Rosalie Garber, and Amelia Jacobs, all sisters from the band Call Me Spinster. Their, their self-titled EP is available now wherever it is that you stream and download your jams. You can find them at spinsterband.com. You heard, uh, hearing the song, Here You Are. You'll hear the rest of it in just a second. Uh, man, what a great conversation. What, what great talents and what sweet people. They're really nice, and they really did have extremely beautiful blue eyes. If you see a photo of them, you'll be like, whoa, what? In fact, you can see a photo of them if you go to our How Did I Get Here Facebook page and you like it. Yes, you should like our Facebook page. Also, check out spinsterband.com. That's Call Me Spinster's website. Uh, check out their self-titled EP out now, available now, wherever it is that you stream and download your jams. In fact, there's a great video for Here You Are. 
that song that you're hearing. Great video. Check it out. All right. And while you're out there checking out spinsterband.com, don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Overcast, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere. New shows every Tuesday and every Friday, sometimes three shows a week. Talking to bands from Austin, from Texas, from all over the world, including Chattanooga, Tennessee's own Call Me Spinster. Their self titled d- debut EP out now. Check it out. Let's hear the rest of this song. Here you are. Thank you for listening to this show. Have a great day, whatever it is you're doing. And let's get down. <laughs>